So my paper was titled Exploring Argument Retrieval for Controversial Questions Using Retrieve and Rerank Pipelines. Uh, not a very descriptive title, but yeah, I'll begin to explain maybe. Uh, so firstly, uh, just to recap what Lucas just mentioned, we have task one where we have a document crawl, uh, document collection crawl from debate portals. Uh, it's called the args.me corpus. And uh, this year's task, uh, just like last year, uh, included 50 topics where each topic consists of multiple arguments supporting or contesting the premise. And in the screenshot here, you can see one such topic where yeah, you have a question on uh, the, the title is a, about climate change and there's a description and narrative. Yeah, so I'll just quickly move forward. Uh, I just want to talk about our contribution here. So firstly, we trained a bird based model uh, uh, on a mass language modeling task uh, on the entire corpus, which we have released on Hugging Face already. We also re-annotated the, the uh, uh, question answer page that were given to us by the organizers uh, because we found some issues with them. Uh, we also released some bi-encoders uh, for retrieval and some cross-encoders for re-ranking. So yeah, all of these are available. You can use them if you want. Uh, so firstly, pre-training. Uh, we have seen some literature on how domain adaptive pre-training has been known to offer gains in task performance. So that's what we follow. We Instead of taking BERT, we take Robotabase uh, because, yeah, like no real reason. It was arbitrary. But yeah, you could experiment with bird base as well. So we take Robota base, we do MLM on it for 10 epochs. We achieve perplexity of 4.1. If we had more compute, we could have trained for more epochs, but yeah, 10 epochs seem nice. Uh, yeah, we take these models for uh, for the like downstream tasks. So before we go into that, uh, I want to talk about re-annotation. So yeah, we were given 2298 relevance judgments or question answer pairs, you could say, for training slash evaluation of our systems. Uh, these were full of errors. Uh, they were definitely not suitable for either training or evaluation. Uh, I guess these were a result of crowdsourcing. So yeah, we could talk about that. Uh, we re-annotated uh, all of these relevance judgments. We're going through two rounds of annotation for each pair. And yeah, we achieved the uh, Krippendor's alpha of 0.39. Uh, not very high. So yeah, that again signals an issue with the annotation process itself. Uh, yeah, once we have these annotations, we can talk about the cross encoders and bi encoders that we trained. So the cross encoder, it's essentially the standard BERT architecture where full attention is applied to uh, tokens of two sentences. So you can see uh, on the right, uh, the cross encoder, it's treated like a pairwise sentence classification task where sentence A could be a question, sentence B could be an answer, and the cross encoder is giving you the relevance or quality or whatever. So in this case, the cross encoder is being used as a re-ranker, whereas by encoder, uh, it's a modification of a standard BERT architecture where you can generate independent sentence embeddings uh, by adding the pooling operation on top of the contextualized token vector. So this is an advantage because you're getting independent vectors for each question and each answer, right? So these could be indexed into a dense retrieval system. Hence, spy encoders could be used for retrieval. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about now. So firstly, the retrieval models. Uh, uh, so we all are familiar with sparse retrieval models like PM25. BN25 is the de facto industrial standard even now. 
uh, or its parents maybe uh, uh, yeah so we, we experiment with bm25 uh, and hnsw for dense retrieval right so the hnsw is hierarchical small world graphs uh, these represent the current state of the art in dense retrieval uh, here the dense sentence embeddings from the buy and code uh, indexed uh, yeah and just one note like we were shown i think some parts of the data by lucas before each document consists of premises and a conclusion we ignore the conclusion and only use the premises for your indexing task yeah as far as re-ranking is concerned we experiment with two models one we train a cross encoder with our own annotations second we just take a cross encoder train on ms marco uh, yeah, and uh, the figure here just gives a simple depiction of a pipeline. Uh, yeah, so we have a sparse retriever or a dense retriever which generates some candidates. Uh, we have a re-ranker trained on our annotations or my MS Marco that re-ranks these candidates. And then you have a bunch of documents ranked. Yeah, we also experiment with data augmentation wherein a cross encoder is trained on MS Marco uh, uh, and it's used to weakly label a sample of query document pairs. So how is this sample generated? Uh, we just uh, put the topics or the questions into a uh, BM25 index. The candidates that are generated, those are fed into this cross encoder trained on MS Marco. That gives us some labels. These are you could say silver labels. So yeah, these are appended to the gold labels that were annotated by us. And that lets us augment our data set. Uh, yeah, on the right, you can see a figure about this. Uh, going to evaluation. So this I think is interesting. Uh, yeah, I can talk run by run maybe. So first run we have a BM25 and as a retriever, no augmentation, and it was re-ranked by MS Marco. So that performs the lowest. Second run performs the best. It's BM25, uh, no augmentation, and the re-ranker was trained on our annotations. Uh, so that gives us a relevance of 0.608 and quality of 0.803. Uh, the third retriever, it's BM25 as well as uh, the small world navigation graph uh, or approximate nearest neighbor, you could say. Uh, these, uh, so I think I, I retrieved 50 from BM25 and 50 from the, the dense retriever. And uh, these were re-ranked by the same cross encoder as before. So yeah, very similar performance here. So I guess appending did not help maybe, or maybe we need more, uh, annotation to like cover all the uh, documents in the run because these were double in size compared to run number two and then we have run number four which was just a dense retriever and a, a re-ranker this performed worse than a sparse retriever so th this does indicate that bm25 does outperform uh, dense retrievers for retrieval tasks uh, in the final run, we combine a sparse and a dense retriever, and also we augment uh, along with re-ranking. This also did not beat run number two. So I'm not sure if augmentation helped. Maybe we need more scrutiny there. Yeah, and just for reference, we have uh, the best runs at the bottom. Yeah, so some takeaways. Uh, firstly, like our tasks you could treat them as baselines we did not do anything fancy we even got rid of the conclusions treating only the premises of the documents so it was a relatively simple approach i would say uh, hence like what i found interesting was the annotation part where once i looked into it they were pretty bad right and uh, we could blame crowdsourcing for it uh, maybe not uh, but I do think uh, we need to take a, a stronger look at this uh, because even in our case, the uh, inter-annotator agreement was quite low, 0.39, which does suggest that 
yeah this entire data creation process needs more discussion i think uh secondly yeah in domain training helps uh cross encoders train on ms marco don't really generalize to this data set so that's uh, again an ob obvious observation thirdly another obvious observation you could say bm25 remains robust uh, and bm25 for retrieval and transformers for re-ranking seems to be the best approach uh, right now so yeah that's about it uh, thanks for listening